All those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. This was all done by the hand of God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. The hand of God.
dead will live again The lame will leap The dumb will speak The praises of the Lamb Mary, did you know That your baby boy is Lord Your baby boy, he will one day rule the nations. Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect land? And this sleeping child you're holding, he's the great. months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think, what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. You will be very great, and he will be very great, and, be, and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his, of your, of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was a barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of for the word, word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you said about me come true. And then the angel left her.
This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was convinced by the Holy, conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the, uh, the Lord's message through the prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel, angel of the Lord commanded him, commanded and took Mary as his wife. Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Cornelius was the governor of Syria. All returned to their ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he took he had to go to Bethlehem of Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled from there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to a firstborn son. She wrapped him in snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them.
of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. The radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you, I bring you news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of clothes lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angels was joined by a vast host of others, the army of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was a, was a baby lying in a manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angels had, had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds, uh, shepherd's story were astonished. 
But Mary kept these things in her in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angels had told them. Let's sing joy to the world. Y'all want to sing? was born in Bethlehem in Judea. During the reign of King Herod, about the time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called the meeting of the leading priests and the teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea. They said, For this is what the prophet wrote, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to the 
guided them to Bethlehem. They went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed and worshipped him. Then they opened the, their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish, the hand of God. Amen. How wonderful was that? Amen. Yeah, clap for the kids and clap for Catherine. Merry Christmas. It's good to be with you, church family. Thanks for coming out on this snowy, cold Christmas Eve. Oh, that really was wonderful. Kids, way to go. Miss Tina, thank you. Catherine, thank you. That's the kind of stuff that sticks with you for the rest of your life. Mom and Dad, thank you for making uh, time to be here tonight. I know it's not easy. You've got presents to wrap, uh, breakfast to prepare, things to do, and I understand that. So thank you for making time tonight. Before I give my brief word, let's just pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this evening Emmanuel, God with us, we honor you. Lord, you are the point, you are the hope, you are the truth, you are the life. We come to you with thankful hearts because you came to us first. You came to us first. And Lord, we say thank you tonight. Father, we, we go to sleep with the same anticipation for your glory to arise with the new morning as Mary did the night you were born, Lord. Father, we, we honor you. We ask that you would come, you would move in our hearts, that you would remind us that no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what we feel or what we experience, you remain the same, the one true God who gave his life for his people. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. If you'll stand with me, we're just gonna honor the word in a special way tonight. John 6, verse 26 this is Jesus speaking. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, you want to be with me because I fed you. This was after he fed the multitudes. Not because you understand the miraculous signs, but, but don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For, the God, for God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, we want to perform the works too. God's works is too. What should we do? And Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. Then they, an they answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the one true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. And then Jesus replied like this, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty, but you haven't believed in me even though you've seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me and I will never reject them for I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not my own will. And this is the will of God that I should not lose even one of those that he has given me, but I should raise them up 
at the last day, for it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to disagree, began to murmur in disagreement because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father. We know his mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? Amen. And you can be seated. What a claim. What a claim to make. I am the bread. I am the life. Satisfaction, abundance, everything you've ever desired, everything that, I, that I've created you to be can only be fulfilled in relationship to me. You know, Jesus is the only one who's made this claim that's been able to stand behind what he said for all of human history. Isn't that, tr- that the truth? There's been many who've come after him and said the same things. There's been many who've come before him and said the same thing. But there's only been one true bread of heaven. There's only been one who's been proven time and time again. There's only been one who's actually been able to satisfy. And his name is Emmanuel, Yeshua, Jesus, God with us. See, tonight I want to talk about the bread of heaven. The bread of heaven. See, Jesus has a purpose for our lives. What's his purpose? John 10.10, 10, he says, I've come to give you life and life abundant. So does that mean like life and it's kind of okay sometimes? Life and it's like, ah, oh, you know, I'll just squeeze by today. I didn't like what was going on. But, you know, if I just grit my teeth and keep moving, things are going to look better. No, he said, I came to give life and life abundant. And then there is a thief, isn't there? And what is the thief here to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. You know, he's pretty good at that, too. He's, he's been working all of his existence to figure out ways to get you to believe that chasing a little carrot in hopes of satisfaction called deception would give you what you want. He's pretty good at doing that, isn't he? See, this is his strategy. Is he wants to imitate. He wants to counterfeit. He wants you to continue to believe that if you keep, just keep chasing the things you want and think you need, that you're going to have a satisfied life. Why does he do this? Because we all desire to be satisfied, don't we? We have an innate nature designed within us to get the things that we think we need in order to live the life we think we want. And this is good. It's not a bad thing to pursue a, a, an abundant life. It's actually a good thing. If you, if you weren't, there'd be something wrong with you. But the truth remains the same. Satisfaction only comes by consuming and being consumed by the bread of heaven. <laughs> See, the night that Jesus was born, all heck turned loose, didn't it? (laughs) Let's just think about this for a minute. Could you imagine, for the guys in here, traveling by donkey on road at night to look for a hotel because you had to go pay your taxes and be counted for a census? What do you think the arguments were like that night? (laughs) Honey, I got to go to the bathroom. Can we stop? You should have turned left, not right pretty sure it was a hard night. Pretty sure it wasn't fun. I'm pretty sure at this point, Mary was probably thinking, you know, that angel, he probably wasn't who he said he was. I was probably dreaming, wasn't I? But what did they keep, what did they do? What was the response? They just kept moving forward. You know, sometimes in life, when when we have the word from from God, when we know what we're supposed to be doing, things are going to get a little messy, aren't they? Things are going to get a little unpredictable. You know, Mary was preparing to have a baby, and now she's being sent on the road by donkey to go to to pay taxes and do a census. You know, I always wondered about that. Like, why didn't Mary just say to Joseph, you know, maybe we could just be like 15 days late. (laughs) You know, we'll pay the penalty, whatever it is. Why do we have to go tonight? But they went tonight, and it turns out that as they went, that there was no place in the inn for them to go, was there? They were all filled Again, it's, it's like trying to get a, a hotel room when the Titans are playing on, on Sunday morning, trying to get a hotel room on Saturday night. There's just no space. There's nowhere to go. So they get there, and there's, there's nowhere to go, and they have to go into a barn. And you know, at this point, if you're Mary, you're probably thinking, man, this is crazy. What are we doing? And if you're Joseph, you're probably thinking, I hope she just stops yelling at me so we can go to sleep. I'd, I'd probably make a bet with you that that night was not a pleasant night leading up to Jesus' birth. But they just kept moving forward. Sometimes all you have to do is just keep moving forward. 
You just have to keep saying yes to what you said yes to in the first place. So it says that they, uh, she goes into labor, she gives birth, and, and what happens when she gives birth? The kids read it, they wrapped Jesus in, in, in cloth, and they laid him into a manger. Why did they lay Jesus into a manger? You see, Jesus' birth was actually a prophetic declaration. A manger is a feed crib. This is where animals eat. Why was Jesus laid where things eat? Because he's the bread of life. He's the bread of life. See, he was laid in the manger amongst common things from common people because he is the bread of life. And he was declaring in that night, in his birth as an infant, you can come to me, but you must be prepared to eat. You must be prepared to consume who I am because you can't come on your own terms. You can't come to me looking for what you want. You have to agree with who I am. And I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Isn't it ironic that the fall of humanity happened at a meal in the Garden of Eden? But then the, the, the fulfillment of mankind, the, the, the redemption of mankind also happened at a meal in the upper room. But instead of the enemy feeding the meal, who was feeding the meal this time? The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. You know, the word peace doesn't mean lack of conflict. When we say the Prince of Peace, we're not saying Jesus came to take conflict from the world. That word peace actually means wholeness, satisfaction, sound mind. See, when we consume the bread of life, when we consume Jesus, when we allow him to consume us, we actually become whole because of who he is, despite who we are. <laughs> See, we're going to take communion tonight, and I think that the word of the Lord for tonight is that we need to learn to take communion, not for just what we get. See, they came to Jesus asking him to do another miracle, and he said, guys, you're missing the point. You keep asking me for things and missing who I am. I think the Lord is saying, I want my bride to come to the communion table to consume me and just be satisfied in who I am. I am enough. I am your portion. I am your desire. I am your fulfillment. I am your life if you'll just consume me. See, we get, we get so bogged down of coming to him and, and asking him for things and then him not doing what we want and then we become disappointment and we think, God, did you even know I was here? Did you even hear what I said? Do you even know what I need? And he says, no, 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 you're confused. All you need is me. All you need is to consume who I am. So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was sitting there with his closest friends. He was fulfilling on that Passover dinner who he was when he came to the, who he is when he came to the earth as the bread of life, as a baby, to his teenage years, all the way to the, the, the day of fulfillment at age 33. He was fulfilling it by saying, take this bread. And don't take it because it's just good to eat and it's just what we do. Take it because it's me. Take it because it's who I am. And as you consume me, I actually consume you. As you consume me, as you come to me just because of who I am, I actually begin to fulfill the deepest desires of your heart. You don't have to look for fulfillment in relationships anymore. You don't have to grind yourself down climbing a corporate ladder. You don't have to look for your, your satisfaction and your bank records anymore. You can just consume me and then be consumed by who I am. So he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body. Take this and eat. And as you do this, remember who I am. Not remember who what I can do. Not remember what you need. Not remember what you lack. Just remember who I am. Because as you remember who I am, you become who you're supposed to be. See, this is a victory table. We do find healing in communion. We do find victory in communion. We do find the, the breakthrough of heaven at the communion table. But it starts with recognizing who Jesus is and letting go of what we think we need. Then he took the cup and he said, guys, this cup is a cup of redemption. This is wine, but it, it is my blood. 
And I'm signing a signature with this cup today that my body resides in you as you reside in me because of my blood being poured out on your behalf. You see, you're a mess. You're broken. You say one thing, you do another. You want one thing, and then the next day you want another. We all are broken people. But the good news is that Jesus was born into brokenness. He was born into brokenness, not because he was hiding, but because he wanted you to know that he is Emmanuel, God with us, that he enjoys to meet us in the place of brokenness. You know, then the, 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 the disciples, they took the bread, they drank the wine, and in that moment, one of them goes and, and betrays Jesus. He totally messes it up. None of them fully understand what he's talking about at this point. He goes to the cross, he dies, he resurrects, he ascends into heaven, and then he gives us the promise of the Holy Spirit. See, that's a fulfillment of communion too. We receive another portion of Holy Spirit's presence as we come to the table. <laughs> so stand with me. I want to pray uh, over the elements and over us. The communion table is open. Try not to get hay in your bread as you come. <laughs> Straw, excuse me. You can just break a piece of the bread and dip it in the wine or the juice. Enjoy his presence. But Lord, we thank you that you are the bread of life. We thank you, Father, that you were born in a stall, in a barn, and place in a manger as a prophetic declaration that I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the truth. Come and consume and be consumed by my presence. Father, we pray now, anybody here who's been searching through relationships, who's been searching through other things, the things of this world to find satisfaction, that they now would see that you are the true bread of life. That they now would see that everything they need is fulfilled through relationship with you. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come now, that you would fall on these elements, that you would make this simple offering of bread and juice, your body, your blood, and that you would fall upon us, and that you would fill us with your presence and remind us of who you are as we come and consume the bread of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come as you feel led. The table is open. And we're going to worship for a little bit and then dismiss. Step down from heaven, humbly you came, God of all creation, here with us in a starlit manger. Amen, you.
Thank you, Jesus, for your body. Thank you for your blood. If you don't know Jesus, if you've not consumed the bread of life, I'd like for you to come forward and ask on how to receive him. There's going to be people up here to pray with you. Uh, But as we dismiss, I'd like for us to say the Lord's Prayer. So if you'll stand with me one more time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Merry Christmas. God bless you guys. And I'll see you next year. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. This is one of the most important messages of the night. There are cookies and coffee on the table. Okay, we'll go back into it. Sing.